What's up, everybody? And welcome in to the calm before the storm. The weather is great right now, and it's supposed to get bad here tonight and tomorrow morning, so we never know when we're going to lose power. So I figured let's record a video, make sure we give the people what they want, and give them a little taste of something so they don't miss me too much over the next couple of days where we might not have power, depending on what happens with the hurricane. We are prepared. We are ready to go. We are as hunkered down as we can be. Um, and our house is in a pretty safe spot, not a flood zone. So I don't expect any major issues with storm surges, probably branches and things like that. And again, the worst thing probably being power and AC and things like that. But last year I actually went live during the hurricane on my cell phone. I did it on Instagram. I'm going to see if I can set that up again. Obviously not if it's like really bad, but just if it's like some weather, we get bad thunderstorms here all the time. So if it's not a direct hit and we're just getting a band or something like that, maybe we'll still be hanging out talking hurricane stuff. Um, one thing I actually did want to discuss is my top 10 hurricane or storm movies. I don't know if we're going to do a short out of that or if that's something we'll talk about later, but today's video, it's already been a minute and I haven't even told you what we're talking about today. Alec Murdoch, all these financial crimes we've been waiting. When's he going to plead guilty? He already confessed to them under oath. He already admitted a multitude of crimes that could put him in prison for the rest of his life. Well, he has now pled guilty to some financial crimes. Now, the hearing is not until September, but we're going to talk about what federal crimes are hanging over his head, what he could plead to, what he could get, why he would do this. There was some speculation that the reason that the speedy trial happened the way that it did had something to do with the fact that he would rather be in federal prison versus state prison. We're going to talk about the differences between state and federal prison. And then at the end, we're actually going to hear some clips from Buster Murdoch, who has broken his silence about the Stephen Smith allegations and his involvement there. Now, his denial is not a surprise, but some things he talks about, I think, are worth discussing here for us. So hit that like button if you haven't already. Subscribe to our page. Never know when we're going to go live during this hurricane. Um, tonight or this afternoon, 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern, we are going to be live streaming our fantasy football draft for our members only if you guys want to check that out. Um, as long as I have Wi-Fi, of course. That's why I'm recording this now before the weather starts. But let's get into it. Alec Murdoch. Where is, here we go. Alec Murdoch. Just kidding. I don't know where my Alec Murdoch dog is. There it is. All right. 14. Here are the charges that he's facing in federal court. And that's what the, these are the notes I have is just the, the charges I've found. 14 counts of money laundering, five counts of wire fraud, one count of bank fraud, one count of conspiracy to commit wire fraud and bank fraud, and one count of conspiracy to commit wire fraud. Okay. So those are a bunch of different federal financial crimes, AKA white collar crimes. Most of them carry with them a 20 or 30 year sentence, which if you're as old as Alec Murdoch, when you're talking 20 plus crimes of 20 and 30 plus years, that's life in federal prison. Now we know he is going to plead guilty. We don't know what charges he's going to plead guilty to all of them. Some of them, will they drop some of them? Um, as a response to a plea deal or in order to get a plea deal, will he, will they drop some of the charges? Do they even need to? Does Alec Murdoch have any leverage at all besides not wasting the state's time and money? What incentive does the state or the federal government have to not just throwing the book at him and charging him with everything? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Now, why would Alec Murdoch um want to plead guilty now. Why would he want to plead guilty now? And we've seen Fleming and um, some of his other, uh, Russell, whatever that guy's name, Lafitte. We've seen some of those guys get convicted, plead guilty, some of his co-conspirators and some of these crimes, some of the people that stole money with him. So that could be one reason that the ship is going down, so he might as well plead guilty. Another reason is he's already admitted this stuff under oath, which we already mentioned. But the last reason, and the one I heard a lot of people talk about, and we've dealt with before, um, especially my dad, and I was talking to him about this actually this morning. He's on vacation, but I was like, hey, did you see this? Um, and that reason is federal prison is not as bad as state prison. So maybe Alec Murdoch is taking a plea deal to go to federal prison and get out of his life sentence in state prison. But how would he do that? And how does it work normally? Well, usually 
the first place you're sentenced to is where you do your time. And as we know, Alex Murdoch has already been sentenced to life in the state penitentiary by Judge Newman. So if we're going by those rules, he's going to have to do his state time first. So if it was 10 years, he would do his 10 years in state and then finish off in federal prison. If they ran concurrent and it was a 20-year federal sentence, 10-year in state, he would do 10 years in state, then 10 years in federal prison. If the state was longer and they ran concurrent, then he would never get to federal prison. Um, if they ran consecutive, he would do his state time and then his federal time, but only one life to live on this earth. So his full life sentence... I can't remember. Did he get multiple life sentences now? I can't remember. Um, I, I think he... No, I can't remember. But it would make sense if he had multiple life sentences in state. Point being, practically speaking, he would never get to federal prison, regardless of, it, regardless of if it was 20 years, 30 years, 60 years, 80 years. So if he ran it the normal way and he finished the time where he was sentenced first, which was state, then he never gets to federal prison, which is you know what people want. Now, neither prison seems great to me. I'll stay out of all of them if I can have my choice about it. So how would he circumvent the norm? And how would he get out of serving time in state and instead serve it in federal prison? Well, you can do that by agreement as part of your plea deal. Usually the attorney general is involved and it's interesting because the attorney general is also involved in his state prosecution. But by agreement, you can make this happen. And usually it's when the criminal defendant has leverage. Or if he has a two-year state sentence and a 20-year federal sentence, maybe it just makes sense to have him go to federal prison. So that does happen sometimes by agreement. But why would the government ever agree to that? It's not like Alec Murdoch has leverage. It's not like they would be worried about convicting him of these crimes. Forget about the media attention. Forget about what everybody thinks or knows about Alec Murdoch at this point. They will be able to read back from a typed out or even play by video, him admitting these crimes on the stand under oath. There is no way he would ever win a criminal trial on these financial charges. Now, I didn't read each count specifically and make sure that it lines up with every single person and every single one of these counts. They, they were the same people he admitted to on the stand, but you get the gist. You watched the trial. Is there any doubt in your mind that he would be convicted of financial crimes? And again, you know me, presumed innocent, and he is still presumed innocent, but I have no doubt how that trial will go. And again, the defendant's own words are oftentimes the most damning evidence against them. And that's exactly how this trial would go. So why would they give him any benefit at all? I would frankly be absolutely floored if they did a deal and agreed to let him go to federal prison, which is what he, again, wants I don't think he actually wants to be there, but I should say prefers federal prison over state prison, especially when that would make to me, it would feel like two justice systems, which was their phrase that they used, that there is not two justice systems here. One for people like Alec Murdoch and one for everybody else. No more. That's what they said. Those were the interviews that we all saw. So if they let him go to federal prison, I will give them the side eye and say, sounds like maybe two different criminal justice systems here. So I would be shocked if they did that. And I will be surprised if Alec Murdoch ends up in federal prison. Now, if he wins his appeal um, on the state charges for the death of his wife and son, then he would end up in federal prison, right? And he would be potentially held there waiting a new trial, so those things can obviously change the process. But as it sits right now, having the state conviction already done and sentenced in state court and state prison, I would be very surprised if somehow he makes his way over to federal prison. Now, why do um, people prefer federal prison over state prison? Well, number one, usually people in federal prison are more White collar crimes, less violent crimes. In state prison, the long-term people are there for violent crimes. But guess what? If Alec Murdoch really does plead guilty, then hold on one second. If he really does plead guilty, he checks all these boxes. Right? 
he is a violent offender and a white collar offender. So both of those fit state and federal prisons. So he wants to get away from people like himself, people that have committed violent crimes and been convicted of them or pled guilty to them. So that's one reason. Second reason can be the conditions. Cleaner, safer, air conditioning, better food. Not that you know every air conditioning is different, but usually those amenities, we'll call them, are better in federal prison than they are in state court. Additionally, usually there are better programs, like educational programs, opportunities to study and do different things and have different jobs that are all usually better in federal prison versus state prison. Pete Sardis, I think, did a, a little bit of a deeper dive into this when talking about um, Elizabeth Holmes sentencing and Elizabeth, Hol Elizabeth Holmes goes to prison. If you want to look those up, those older videos on our page, I encourage you to do so. So Murdoch's going to prison for the rest of his life. So anybody that was worried about his murder convictions being overturned, anybody that was worried he was going to get out, anybody worried was worried that, you know, people like him just end up back out on the streets regardless of what they convict get convicted of, that is very, very unlikely now that we hear he has decided to plead guilty. I don't know why they would give him any breaks. I don't know why they would agree to any time that would end up being anything less than his entire life, anything less than 50 years, 80 years, 100 years, something like that. So regardless of what happens with the state case, he's locked up forever. And this is exactly what we were saying during the state case. And people that were, you know, claiming his innocence or claiming he should have been not guilty, which is fine. I think there was an argument for that. I think we discussed that. I think I said I would have probably voted not guilty based on the evidence presented by the state, but regardless, he's going to be in prison for the rest of his life. And this confirms that. I understand why they convicted him as well. And especially when we heard from the jurors and what they took, and especially the, I knew he was going to get convicted because of the other bad acts. Being these other bad acts, and they were so bad that he's going to be sentenced to prison for the rest of his life. So these are bad acts. These are the worst acts. So it's all kind of coming full circle for Alec Murdoch and his buddies. But what about his son? Allegations have been loud about Buster Murdoch potentially having a relationship with Stephen Smith and that being the reason for it. Stephen Smith hires Glory Satterfield's attorneys, Eric Bland and Ronnie Richter. They do more autopsies and testing to try to figure out who did this. Nobody actually officially names Buster Murdoch a suspect, including those lawyers, even though they obviously have history with the Murdoch family. So theoretically, the Stephen Smith case could have nothing to do with the Murdoch family, but just hiring them creates connections. A lot of people have been saying it online, in the news, otherwise. He did this. We know he did this. He went did this to cover it up. And then also what happened to his parents, Buster was involved to cover this up. Those allegations are out there. People have said those things. So Buster Murdoch, obviously, with potential criminal charges hanging over his head, hasn't spoken much about this. He's not a lawyer. He went to law school. I don't know if he's back in law school, but he was in law school at some point, obviously being around his dad and the law firm and his grandfather and his uncle, being around the law for his entire life. Basically, he knows better than to make statements publicly when there's a criminal investigation, but he's making statements. It's been a while. He's waited. So maybe he knows that he's been cleared. Maybe he knows something we don't. But there are just a couple minutes of some snippets from those statements he made. And let's see what we can learn about those statements. People who claim to have heard rumors about Stephen Smith and Buster Murdoch. Now Murdoch is answering questions about the allegations for the first time. His sister said someone approached her and said that you and Stephen were romantically involved. His brother says that someone approached him and says that you were with a group of young men who beat him with a baseball bat. So people approached people, and you know, this is literally the definition of hearsay. This person told me who told me who told me half of this stuff probably wouldn't come in, but that you had a physical relationship with him or a romantic relationship with him. And then somebody else that you and some guys beat him with a baseball bat. These accusations are flying. And these quote unquote sources say, right? Sources say 
you had this relationship and you did this and you did that. And this is, these are very serious allegations. Horrible things to say about somebody if they're not true. So let's hear how he responds. What do you say to that? To Again, both of those. Absolutely. Baseless rumors. I unequivocally deny anything that you just read off of that piece of paper. I unequivocally deny everything you've read off that piece of paper. So I don't love the words like unequivocally. They sound practiced and polished. Um, I like that, that those were baseless rumors and he denies everything. Not surprising. Let's keep listening. I did not have any personal intimate relations with Steven and that obviously cannot be proven because it is baseless. I never had anything to- Never had a romantic intimate relationship with Steven. They cannot be proven because they're baseless. It sounded like, like his denial can't be proven, but I get what he's saying. Like nobody's gonna be able to prove that because they weren't true. Now here's what I'll say. I always give people the benefit of the doubt, assuming he's telling the truth, even knowing who his dad is. Um, but saying something like that, because guess what? He could have had a romantic relationship with Stephen Smith and still not committed the murder, right? We all understand that. We're all on the same page there. So saying that you had a relationship with him, even if it was hidden, doesn't mean you committed the murder. Obviously, it makes you more of a suspect. But saying that you absolutely did not have a romantic relationship with him, and it can't be proven. And let's say, just for argument's sake, they find messages or Snapchats or pictures or videos that prove otherwise. Well, now you start to have the Alec Murdoch problem, which is why lie? Why lie about something so big and important and that you knew would be something people would point to and think that that would make you the number one suspect? Why lie about it? And if you're lying about that, what else are you lying about? So that's why, even though he is a polished guy, law school, lawyers in the family, maybe used to being in front of the cameras, I don't know. But that's why even someone like this, having this conversation, you drop breadcrumbs that could turn into mountains you would have to move to prove your innocence. And yes, I'm saying prove your innocence at that point. Because in our system, if you publicly lie and everybody hears about a lie, they pile on. That presumption of innocence goes away quick. It's one of the problems with media and society. You can lie about something and not be lying about another, but who's to blame if you're caught in a lie that you so publicly make with a straight face? I'm not saying he's lying, but saying anything that can be factually disproven or prove that he is lying about a fact that is important. Again, it is not the crime. But it is important. You got to think about that when you give interviews, when you talk to law enforcement. If you misstate a fact, like his father did multiple times on um, body cam footage, that's going to be thrown back in your face over and over again throughout the process. You just be careful. And if you're not sure, don't say anything. To do with his murder. And I never had. Regardless of if you're sure or not, don't say anything. Right? That's the real advice. Anything to do with him is baseless. I never had anything to do with his murder and I never had anything to do with him on a physical level of, of any regard. No one has ever been charged in Stephen Smith's death and the results of the second autopsy conducted after Smith's remains were exhumed earlier this year have not been released. However, the attorney representing Smith's mother told Law and Crime that a state grand jury is investigating his death. Martha McCallum asked Murdoch where he was the night Stephen Smith died. Where were you? So before we get to where he was, no suspects have been arrested. A grand jury is doing an investigation, right? They don't have a suspect that they are looking at charges or coming up with probable cause for charges on. And Stephen Smith's mother's attorneys are Bland Richter. So if it was Murdoch, they're not saying it the night that Stephen Smith was killed? The night Stephen was killed, I was at our Edisto Beach house. With your family? With my mom and my brother. Two witnesses who can vouch for Buster Murdoch's whereabouts that night, his mother Maggie and younger brother Paul, are dead. They so, his alibi, right? And we know all about alibis, thanks to the Brian Koberger case, would be 
I was at my Edisto beach house with my mother and my brother and any materials he has to prove that his car, GMC data, his phone, Wi-Fi pings, whatever. That would be his alibi. But we know those two witnesses are no longer with us. And that brings in, you know, the things that people were saying that, that their deaths had something to do with Stephen Smith's death and trying to connect all these dots and lines. And again, we don't know the answer, but this is another fact that Buster Murdoch is saying that if it could be disproven, if somebody was actually with Paul that night and Paul was, you know, out at some college town in Clemson or something like that with his buddies, well, again, if you're Buster Murdoch, why lie? I'm not saying he's lying, okay? I'm just saying, I'm, I'm trying to caution about giving interviews like this when there are potential criminal charges against you, when people are publicly accusing you of something, it may look bad. It may sound bad to just stay silent and stay out of it and not say anything. But it's so much worse, whether you committed the crime or not, to go out and say things that might end up not being true or exaggerate, exa exaggerations, exaggerations or hyperbole. You don't want to do that. You're better off remaining silent. Now, if all this ends up being true, guess what? He could tell law enforcement this. He could tell the state attorney's office this privately. So I'm not saying just sit on something that could prove your innocence. But especially if it comes right now, he's not a suspect. So why make yourself one if something you say publicly in an interview ends up not being true? They were murdered on June 7th, 2021. Or better yet, just with how crazy the media attention is with this case, don't give somebody the opportunity to come forward like these other people are like, oh, I know somebody who, somebody who, somebody who said he beat him with a bat. I knew somebody who said, somebody said that Murdoch and him had a relationship. So now you'd be like, oh, I knew somebody that said they were with Paul that night. Paul was actually out on the boat or Paul was at Clemson or whatever. Why give people the opportunity by saying this publicly? His father, Alec Murdoch, is serving two life sentences for the murders, but plans to appeal. So what has it been like for Buster Murdoch, as some people have suggested he murdered Stephen Smith? What did you feel like when you heard that this thing was surfacing again? Well, it's a lot like this. And, and you know, I, I don't want to be rude here, but have you ever been accused of murdering somebody? No. Well, let me tell you, this is very, 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 it, it's a terrible thing to place on somebody with absolutely no fact. So I agree with him 100% there. The fact that this is being placed on him without anything more than random hearsay from people is really horrible. And again, if I was his lawyer, I would advise him to stay silent. I don't think they can have any connections or prove this case, especially it's been this long. I think people are just trying to pile on and I would tell him to stay out of it. But I understand how frustrating it could be, how it could feel like it's ruining your life and how you feel like you have to go out there and say something. So I don't blame him for this either. I'm just, as a lawyer looking at it, it would scare me a little bit. Um, but it is a really horrible thing to falsely accuse somebody of something so bad and so horrible. So, I mean, I think we all know that and we think about it in more of the domestic violence world, but this is as horrible, if not worse than that. And this, I mean, technically would be considered domestic violence if everything that they're saying is true and they had a relationship and that's what led to the crime. I mean, it is harmed my reputation. I mean, people perceive me as a murderer. This is the second time Buster Murdoch has said his reputation has been harmed by what he calls lies. Whether he plans to take any legal action isn't clear, but he called the allegations that he was involved in Smith's death defamatory earlier this year. The so he mentioned the words defamatory at some point this year, uh, but again, he would have to prove that the people making these statements knew that they were false, knew or should have known, right? It can't be, listen, somebody said this to me and that's what you report. You report that somebody told me that you had a relationship with Stephen Smith. That's the report. Not that it's true or false, just that's what somebody said. And that report is true because somebody did say it, right? Then that's not defamation. And I, I, I think that Johnny Depp, saga has made people think defamation is a lot easier to prove than it is. And it's not, it is very difficult to prove, not impossible as Johnny Depp proved in court, but very difficult. All right. So that's a big Murdoch update. Let me know what you think. Let me know your thoughts about Murdoch taking the plea deal. Let me know your thoughts about his uh, co-conspirators taking plea deals, getting convicted. 
And let me know what you think about the Buster Murdoch and Steven Smith situation and whether or not you think it was a good idea for him to make a statement. We haven't seen the Fox Nation uh, special in its entirety. I don't think it's out yet. So we'll keep an eye out for that and watch and see what else he has to say. Um, I appreciate all the prayers everybody's sending me for the hurricane. We are going to hunker down. We are going to be good. I am confident um, and we are prepared for the worst and hoping for the best as always. Thanks for joining me. Hit that like button on your way out. Till next time. Thanks for watching another episode of The Lawyer You Know. If you enjoyed the episode, please hit the thumbs up and share with your friends who may be interested here on YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok at Tragos Law is our handle. And don't forget to listen to The Lawyer You Know podcast featuring new episodes every week. If you have a case you want to talk to us about, if it's a personal injury case, wrongful death, catastrophic injury, car accident, or slip and fall case, please email us at lawyeryouknow at gmail.com. And of course, all these links I just mentioned are included in the description below on this episode and every episode. So until next time, this is Peter Tragos, The Lawyer You Know.